Hi there, my name is Will and today we're going to learn about orchestrators and what you can do with them. In particular, we're going to discuss what an orchestrator is and how you can use it to help scale operations inside of your company. Jumping right in, what is an orchestrator? Think of an orchestrator a bit like an orchestra, where an orchestra has multiple different instruments and they all need to come together in unison. Now, instead of those instruments, think of those as maybe tasks, different pipelines, microservices, et cetera, et cetera. That's where an orchestrator comes in to tie all of those together and make sure they can work in unison. In particular, it's especially useful if you're working with data pipelines, microservices, CICD platforms to make sure you have a smooth operation. You're probably also wondering, what's the difference between orchestration and automation? Now they are very similar, but Orchestration is effectively automation and then some. Automation is all about executing individual tasks, whether that is, you know, running some unit tests or deploying something, you know, automation is great for making those things happen, but they all sort of happen in isolation. But orchestration is all about the bigger picture. For example, maybe you have multiple tasks running and maybe they depend on one another. So you can make sure that certain tasks only run when other tasks are finished if there are any errors, it can cancel other tasks, especially let you know about those as well. And everything just therefore ties together and makes it a little bit easier to manage and make sure that you don't have to lift a finger when things start to go wrong as well. So while automation is fantastic for scheduling singular tasks, orchestration is where you tie all of that together to make one great system. Now, for example, imagine running tests after every commit or scheduling backups to happen on a nightly basis, or maybe scheduling an email to send when a support ticket has been created. But let's look at how orchestration can take that further. Now, let's think about a data pipeline. Now, often you want to extract, transform, and load your data into a database. Now, an orchestrator can make sure that each of these steps can happen successfully. And if there are any errors, it can both retry steps as well as make sure that later steps do not happen. Now let's discuss a few common use cases for orchestrators so you can understand when you might want to use one in your scenario. Like the example we just said, in data-driven environments, orchestrators are key for being able to allow extract, transform, and load tasks, and making sure you can load them from a variety of different sources, as well as load those into a data warehouse. In CI-CD pipelines, they can be super useful for being able to build, test, and publish your code to various different places at the same time, and manage all of the different steps there to make sure they happen in unison. In distributed systems, microservices often need to communicate with one another, and you can use an orchestrator to help make this happen. Orchestrators can come in here to manage the lifecycle of these microservices to start, stop, restart them, and so on. And if your infrastructure is cloud-based, you can use your orchestrator to help provision resources too. So it allows you to be able to just press a button and it will set up your cloud environment for you. Now let's look at an example of where an orchestrator might be used in action. Here I've got a simple Python file that's going to open a CSV file and it's going to sum the values inside of it and then print those out to the terminal. Now, this is really useful for being able to get data, but without an orchestrator, this file is no use on its own. That's where Kestra can come in to help make this better. Now, I already have this file saved inside of Kestra, so all I need to do now is create my workflow. Here I've created a quick workflow that is going to let us upload a file when we execute it, and then it's gonna run our Python code by passing that file into it. And then we've also got a trigger set up that means it's going to execute this every day at 10 o'clock. Now, if it does fail for some reason, we can also have it send us a Slack message using the error block here at the bottom. So really helpful for keeping us in the loop when this doesn't work. And we can visualize that really easily with the topology view on the right hand side here. It makes it really easy to understand how everything works together. Now, when I execute this and I pass a file into it, we'll be able to see very easily when it's executing and we can see that log message as we expected and we can see that it was successful. In conclusion, Kestra stands out as a user-friendly solution for being able to build complex workflows. It provides both an easy to use interface with both readable workflows as well as good error handling. So all of that combined makes the experience really straightforward. Hopefully you found that useful and you're going to give Kestra a go for your orchestration needs. And maybe you now have decided that you do need an orchestrator to help streamline some of your flows. Hopefully you found that useful and you're gonna start using Kestra to help automate some of your orchestration needs. Now, maybe you've discovered that you actually have a need for an orchestrator. So look no further than Kestra. Make sure to join our Slack community where you can discuss with us your use case and make sure to give us a start on GitHub.